A few dozen states have sued uh, Meta out in California federal court uh, and other locations trying to get a court to rule that some of Meta's and or Facebook's and Instagram's conduct as it relates to children and teens and preteens is deceptive and should uh, be uh, fixed and resolved and otherwise mend their ways to uh, prevent children and teens from, from being addicted to these apps, which is what the main allegation is. What they're trying to do, I think, is a few things. They're trying to uh, bring to the public's attention uh, and have this dialogue that there is a belief out there by scientists and researchers and others, including the attorneys general, that uh, these platforms are harmful to children, that they are purposely designed to addict children and to keep the children addicted and scrolling as long as possible throughout the day because inherently that is the business model. The business model for these apps depends upon use and what better way to get people to use them than to put in features that are addicting. So the, the thrust of this lawsuit is really to aim at those tactics and those behaviors by the companies that are being sued and really to get them to mend their ways and to try to put more controls in. And it's too early to tell how it will shake out, but that's the thrust of the claims that are being made. It's hard to say with certainty using the term addiction as it relates to social media because addiction is a, is a medical term that has medical connotations and there are some scientists and researchers that don't really believe that that term should be applied to social media. We use it in regular speak because it's easy to identify. Uh, we're still seeing uh, the, the, the returns on whether or not it actually is something that is uh, diagnosable as, a, as an addiction, but certainly anyone who's a parent or even a user of social media themselves doesn't need a formal definition to, to conclude that there is something going on as it relates to uh, our own brains and particularly our children's brains as they're continuing to develop. There's just no precedent in history as to what a device that you spend many hours a day on at 10, 11, 12, 13 years old will have on the formation of your brain. And that's just too early to tell. And the attorneys general are trying to be out in front of that on a public health basis, much like they were back when they were suing the tobacco companies in the late 1990s. I think anyone who uses a smartphone uh, should follow this lawsuit because it will impact all of us how it shakes out. But particularly parents should keep an eye out for any potential features that are released for these platforms. I call those mitigation features, whether they be controls or privacy settings uh, or limits that can be placed on the apps. It's way too early for anything to be an outcome of that lawsuit in that way. But certainly keep an eye on the lawsuit to see how the market might move Meta and other social media companies to voluntarily start to add more controls as a way to ward off these potential lawsuits, much like the fast food companies added salads in 25 years ago to their menu as a way to possibly forestall people from saying you're offering this and you're causing harm. So Rhode Island has signed on to that lawsuit. The Attorney General of Rhode Island has signed on as a signatory to the complaint and there is uh, a request for relief in the complaint on behalf of Rhode Island that these companies uh, stop engaging in what Rhode Island calls unfair and deceptive trade practices, which is the theme of the lawsuit. And it's not quite clear from the lawsuit as it's been filed whether there's a significant amount of monetary damages being claimed, but I sense from reading the papers in the case that it's primarily aimed at changing the behavior and the conduct of Meta in the platforms on how they're marketing to children. For sure, to the extent that there is a, uh, a model or an argument out there that the platforms are intentionally designed to be maximally addictive for children, that's going to run the gamut towards all the other platforms to the extent they have those features. And when I say features, I mean things like infinite scroll, where you are purposefully uh, aimed at with the scrolling to keep scrolling and scrolling as opposed to a natural break, break point like we used to have years ago. You used to have to click to go to the next page. Now with this feature called infinite scroll, it's like an ongoing perpetual slot machine, which we all know uh, has its unique characteristics when you just want to keep doing it more and more.
This lawsuit is in an, its very early phases and it is going to be uh, grinding its way through the courts for months, if not years. And then once it's finally resolved, either through a trial or a settlement, uh, it's going to re require some time for it to be implemented. So we, when people measure things in months, I measure them in years because my experience suggests to me it's going to be a, a, a major slog through the courts, unless, of course, the companies and the governments get together and agree on some voluntary resolution where the companies promise to change their ways and to implement certain controls. Uh, typically, most lawsuits do settle and resolve that way, so that is an entirely distinct possibility, but it's way too early to tell.